The first laps have been turned for the Pennsboro Revival, so what does a big-name driver think about the track? We'll talk about it, plus the black magic that still exists in race car chassis, Sunday results, and how you can help hurricane victims and get a free pit pass. Let's go. It's Monday, October 7th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily presented by Kubota Genuine Parts. Is your Kubota equipment due for a tune-up? Their certified technicians are ready to get you back up and running smoothly. From routine maintenance checks to major repairs, their state-of-the-art facilities are equipped to handle all your Kubota service needs, no matter what type of equipment you have. They'll diagnose any issues, replace worn out parts, and get you back to work in no time. Don't let equipment downtime slow you down. Schedule your Kubota service appointment today and experience the difference that comes with being serviced by the experts. Contact your local Kubota dealer to book your appointment now. To find a Kubota dealer, open the My Kubota app and tap the dealer's button at the bottom or visit KubotaUSA.com. As of today, we are about two and a half weeks away from the practice night for the Mason Dixon 100 at Pennsboro Speedway. We've been keeping an eye on the progress there as Barry Braun and his XR folks are in the final days and weeks before uh, racing is set to happen. Still a lot of work to do to both the racetrack itself and the surrounding facility, and there's going to be significant challenges to deal with uh, in the lead up and kind of during the event as well. In recent days, they have had cars on the track taking some test laps. That's included some modified guys like Ryan Roby and some local late model racers, Thomas Sigler, Logan Reed, among others. Yesterday, though, they had a big name stop by with Devin Moran taking his first trips around the speedway. Moran obviously fresh off a very strong Lucas weekend at the Pittsburgher 100. They've posted photos and videos of the cars on track to Pennsboro social media and included some driver commentary as well. After Moran's initial run, while he was kind of getting unstrapped, he was asked his initial thoughts and Moran's quote was, uh, it's not as bad as I thought, unquote. He told Barry that it needs some greater work, but that it felt like a big Ocala. Being egg-shaped like it is, it's obviously much more open and sweeping on the one end and then much tighter on the other. So drivers, they're going to be carrying a lot of speed into what I think is turn three and then needing to really get on the binders hard. It's clear that Moran isn't sure how it's going to race, and he mentioned that in the past, the racing wasn't always the best at Pennsboro, uh, but that the atmosphere and parties were always the draw, and I think that's a fair assessment. It's a big track, strangely shaped, and fairly narrow. I certainly appreciated Moran's candor, and for Barry not being worried about posting the videos anyway, I don't know that every promoter would have been okay posting that type of feedback to social media from a driver. Looking at some of the videos and images, they've cleared space on the hillside, which will likely be the main place to watch the racing from. They do have some scattered sections of Jersey Barry around the track, but they did say that guardrails and fencing will be installed in the coming days. It's going to be a mad dash to the finish. We'll certainly continue to watch the progress. The Mason Dixon 100 will feature co-sanctioned late model races between the XR Super Series and ULMS plus sport mods. Bobby Pierce currently leads the XR Championship right now over Devin Moran and Ryan Gustin. Uh, did you guys see the Flow Racing and Dirt on Dirt story from Kevin Kovac about Jonathan Davenport running his famous Eldora car this past weekend during the Pittsburgher? Kovac details all of the logistics that had, ha uh, had to happen for the car to be ready to race for PA Motor Speedway as it was still sitting in, pa uh, in Batesville, Arkansas. Crew Chief Corey Fosvet had some long drives. He slept in Steve Arpin's motorhome at the Longhorn Shop. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Kovac is like one of the only people still doing like real journalism in dirt racing, so check out his story. That car, though, usually only brought out for the Eldora Crown Jewels, but as Davenport says in the story, he knew they had to have a good weekend if they were going to have a shot at this Lucas title. It's one of the things that I think is still wild about building race cars, that with all of the technology we have, guys will still find a car that they favor for whatever reason. I like that there's still just a little bit of black magic when it comes to building these chassis. Davenport told Kovac that he just trusts the car like a, quote, old pair of shoes. How many guys over the years have gone to great lengths to keep a specific car on the track to keep it racing? And, you know, I'm thinking about like the Aaron Reitzel chassis situation or how many guys seem to have been derailed after crashing a specific car. I think Brandon Overton is an example of that right now. They build them on jigs to try to keep them the same. It's the same guys welding them together. They buy the same tubing from the same manufacturers, but no two cars ever exactly the same. 
At Terre Haute yesterday, the final Silver Crown dirt race of the season took place with Logan Seavey finally getting to victory lane. He got past Brady Bacon just beyond halfway and led the rest of the feature. Seavey hadn't won in the Silver Crown car since sweeping the non-wing portion of Four Crown at Eldora in 2023. Days and Persley ended up second, Justin Grant third, and points leader Cody Swanson was 10th. The Silver Crown season wraps up in about two weeks on the pavement at IRP, and this championship, though, not quite settled. Headed to that finale, Swanson leads Grant by just six points. Swanson definitely has the edge here as he's won three of the last eight races at IRP and he's led laps in all eight of those shows. But if he has any issues whatsoever, Grant could easily take this thing. If you want to check out Silver Crown stats and results, that is one of the series we track in the database over at dirttracker.com slash analytics. Uh, you don't need to sign up. A lot of stuff available over there for free. You can look through that anytime you want. In New York, it's Super Dirt Week time at Oswego. Teams and campers already arriving there, and activity started yesterday with the kickoff party. Tech inspection is happening all day. They've got the charity golf tournament going on, and they'll have quarter midget and micromania races later today. Those races will be carried on Dirt Vision this evening if you are so inclined. Dirt racing action starts Tuesday with the Hurricane Harvey 75 program at Brewerton. If you want more info on the week, visit superdirtweek.com. We'll obviously talk more Super Dirt Week as the week goes on as well. I got an email from Kendra at High Limit a few days ago, and I wanted to pass this information along to you guys. If you're headed to any of the High Limit races this week, they are collecting new blankets, unopened diapers, and baby wipes to help with Hurricane Helene relief. If you bring those items, you can get a free pit pass upgrade for the night. They're also accepting cash donations as well. This is in conjunction with Speedway Children's Charities. So that means tomorrow at I-70, Wednesday at Lucas Oil Speedway, and Friday and Saturday at the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway. Donations at I-70 will be collected inside the main grandstand entrance at the High Limit pop-up tent. At Wheatland, they're taking items at the VIP door of the ticket booth starting at 5 p.m. And at TMS, they'll have a track-branded tent inside the main grandstand entrance both days. You can find more details, including a link to donate if you cannot attend over at highlimitracing.com. At Millstream Speedway last night, Zane DeVault was a GLSS sprint car winner. He topped Casey Jedrzejczyk and Van Gurley Jr. DeVault now with four 410 wins and two 360 wins on the season. Max Stambaugh, though, was crowned GLSS champion on the strength of six victories. Quick side note here. Is it bumming anyone else out there? We're almost at the end of the dirt racing season. This year, just can, like it went by really fast, and it always blows me away how quick these years go by. And I can't believe we're down to the final few races. We're, you know, we're, we're at the end of some track championships already. The series are starting to wrap up. We've got just a few weeks really of serious racing left, uh, and then it's over for the year. Uh, anyways, that's the daily show for today. Dirt racing news and more at dirttracker.com. Follow Dirt Tracker across social media. Drop a comment or a show review wherever you tune in. Hope you guys have a great Monday out there. We'll see you back here tomorrow.